Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Love and Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Skincare Nerd and Lipstick Wearer. A lot of you have been asking me to talk more about the science behind makeup products and a lot of people have been asking me what lipstick I've been wearing, so I decided to combine the two in this video. If you like nerding out about the science behind beauty products, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about lipstick science. So what goes into a lipstick? I'm going to be talking about the ingredients that go into a lipstick and the science behind how they make it work. First, let's talk about what a lipstick is. I mean, we all know what a lipstick is, but let's break it down further. Lipsticks are solid sticks that you drag across your skin and they leave behind a thin layer of color. That means that if you really narrow it down to the very basics, a lipstick has to be solid at room temperature, hard enough not to break when you apply some pressure to it, soft enough that it'll leave behind a layer when you drag it across your skin, and that layer has to stay even for a while, even though your lips are one of the places on your face that moves around the most, and it encounters lots of water. So here's what we have in a lipstick to make this all happen. There's a lot of variation with different brands, different types of lipsticks, different finishes, but I had to commit to a percentage to make this diagram, so this is just representative. Most of the lipstick is made up of oily substances like waxes, waxy paste, and oils. This is sometimes called the base of the lipstick and has to strike a good balance between being hard enough not to break and soft enough to leave a nice layer on your lips without too much effort. These oily substances are very water repellent or hydrophobic, which is important because your lips encounter lots of water from drinking and from your spit. The more solid ingredients in the lipstick are usually waxes. They're sometimes called structuring agents and they're what gives a lipstick its solid structure. Some of the really common solid wax ingredients that you'll see are canuba wax, candelilla wax, beeswax, microcrystalline wax, and azocorite. These all have really high melting points, above 60 degrees or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and these keep your lipsticks mostly solid, even when they're on your lips or in a not too hot handbag. Generally, the more wax you have in a lipstick, the harder it will be. Then you have the oils and waxy pastes. These are soft at room temperature and so they'll soften the overall lipstick so that it'll actually apply. A lot of these are also emollient moisturizers so they'll keep your lips soft and moisturized. There is a massive range of ingredients that different lipsticks use for this. You have plant oils like castor oil, butters like shea butter, fatty esters like isosterol isosterate, hydrocarbon based ingredients like polybutene and mineral oil, and silicones like phenyl trimethicone. Oils also give a shiny finish and so matte lipsticks tend to have a bit less of these. This is why matte lipsticks often have this reputation of being really drying and sucking all the moisture out of your lips. But the fact that they have less oils also means that they tend to last longer on your lips so they form a harder layer that doesn't move around and slip around so much. An important aspect of the base is that to get a smooth lipstick it has to dry into small microscopic crystals not larger chunky ones. So this means the lipstick applies more smoothly and also it's less prone to breaking because a small layer of the lipstick can be left behind without breaking off a large chunk. If you have a grainy textured lipstick, this is usually because the base isn't a great blend. Another issue that you might see if you have a bad base mixture is sweating. This is when you see droplets on the surface of the lipstick and usually it's because some of the ingredients in the base aren't playing well together and so some of the oil gets squeezed out. Sometimes this happens in hot weather because the lipstick melts a bit and then re-solidifies and that process squeezes more oil out. Then we have the pigment, which is what gives a lipstick its color. One of the important things about lipstick is that it is on your mouth, which means that it's one of the few cosmetic products that we will actually end up eating quite a bit of. Not as much as fear-mongering places would have you believe, but you do end up eating quite a bit of it. That's the reason why some pigments aren't allowed in lip products at all, or they're only allowed at certain concentrations. The colored pigment is dispersed in the base. This means that it doesn't dissolve in the base, but it's ground up into tiny microscopic pieces that are spread out evenly in the base, and so it looks like it's one continuous color. It's sort of like protein powder in a protein shake, but blended really, really well. You get a much nicer looking lipstick if the pigments are ground up really finely and spread out really evenly in the base. The colour additives in a lipstick are usually in that final section of an ingredients list that says may contain. Usually in a lipstick range, the lipstick base stays the same and it's just the pigments that change. That's why you usually don't see a range of lipsticks that have both matte and shiny finishes, but you usually see a range that has the same finished and different colours in there. 
It's relatively easy to change the pigments in a lipstick around, but if you want to change the finish, you have to change the oils, and that means you have to rejig the whole base, and this is a lot more effort. There are lots of different pigments that you'll see in lipsticks. These are things like inorganic colours, like iron oxide, organic colours and their lake versions which have names like Red 7 or Red 7 Lake. There's also carmine which comes from crushed beetles. You'll see white pigments as well like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. These make your lipstick more opaque and so it hides your underlying lip colour and so when you put it on your lips, it looks more like the colour in the tube rather than your lips plus the colour in the tube. There are also effect pigments in lipsticks, and this is how you get a glittery or shimmery or pearl or matte finish. For shimmery effects, lipsticks use larger particles than your colour pigments would be. So these are things like mica, bismuth oxychloride, and pearl. These are usually added near the end of the lipstick making process, so you don't end up mixing it too much and smashing it up and not having these big flecks anymore. With matte lipsticks, sometimes there's still a bit too much oil for it to look properly matte, and so there'll be something added like silica or clay. On top of that, you want the lipstick to stay good for longer, and so you have preservatives and antioxidants. Lipsticks are generally easier to preserve than other cosmetic products because they don't contain water, they're very oil-based, and so that makes it a lot harder for mold and bacteria to get a foothold. So usually it's just the surface of the lipstick that's a bit of a worry, and so preservatives like parabens and phenoxyethanol are added to stop bacteria and mold growing on the surface. But the big problem with oils and butters is that they tend to go rancid when they're exposed to oxygen for too long, and so antioxidants slow this from happening. You'll see things like vitamin E, BHA, and BHT. But the oils and waxes in the base can still go rancid because if you think about the lifetime of the lipstick, it's relatively long. And oils and waxes on their own do already sort of smell a bit funny and taste a bit funny, like we don't go around drinking oil for a reason. And so to hide this funny taste and funny smell, we have flavours and fragrances in there as well. There are other optional ingredients in there as well, things like sunscreen actives to give your lips some sun protection, and also active ingredients like in skincare. This is just a basic overview, there are lots of other little things that might come up when you're trying to optimise a lipstick formula. The lipstick might stick to the mould when it's being made, and so you might need to add something that helps it shrink a little bit as it hardens and so that unsticks it from the mould. You might also need pigment dispersants to make the colour more even. So the other question is, what lipstick am I wearing? The lipstick I'm wearing when people usually ask me about what lipstick I'm wearing is this one. It's a pretty old lipstick from Tees Cosmetics, it's from E's Ready to Wear collection and it's called Classy Caramel. This is a really pretty brick colour, it's super moisturising and it glides on really well. It's been discontinued for a long time, and I know it's kind of gross, but I still use it. But in my defence, this is based on ingredients that don't go rancid easily, there are lots of hydrocarbons which are very, I guess, unnatural, and on the bright side it means that it lasts for ages without having serious rancidity or micro problems. The other reason I'm still using it is because it's really hard to find a really moisturising lipstick, and it's really hard to find this sort of brick colour anymore. Apparently a lot of lipstick brands have been discontinuing brick colours because they're a bit dated and 90s, but I think it looks really good, I'm not really good at following trends, but from the fact that everyone's been asking me about it, I think the demand is still there, so please, can we have some more? So in the interest of recommending a lipstick that other people could get, and the fact that I should probably replace it, I went around to a whole bunch of stores to try to find a dupe. I think I might have swatched like a hundred lipsticks that looked like they could be a dupe, but I only managed to find two. Conveniently one is kind of high-end and one is budget-friendly. The first one is Becca Ultimate Lipstick Love in Rouge. This is a really nice creamy opaque formula and it comes in a really nice luxe tube which gives a satisfying sound when you open it and it clicks in nicely with a magnet. This is a bit less moisturising and doesn't apply as smoothly, but it's really pigmented and leaves a pretty even stain after it wears off. The other lipstick that matched really well is Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in Extra Spicy. Revlon are my favourite drugstore lipstick brand, I just find that their formulas are really nice and really even and they're just really easy to use. This is more moisturising than the Becca lipstick, but less pigmented. It's sort of in between the Becca and Tees lipsticks. 
These aren't quite as moisturizing and glossy as the Tease Cosmetics one, so sometimes when I wear them, I put on an extra glossier lipstick on top. I've been using Revlon Super Lustrous Glass Shine in Rum Raisin. This is a really moisturizing lipstick, it's almost like a lip balm, but the color isn't quite as intense, and so if I'm trying to go for a more opaque lipstick look, I lay that on top of something else. On its own, it's really good for casual wear if you just want something that gives a bit of color without being a full lipstick. It's a lot like Revlon's discontinued lip butters. Some of the sales assistants recommended that I go to MAC because MAC tends to do nice 90 colors, but they didn't actually have a good match. MAC Chili is the same color, but matte, and so that doesn't give the same sort of finish, the same sort of easy application as my Tease Cosmetics one. We did find that using good form over Auburn lip liner gave the same sort of effect, but I prefer a more all-in-one lipstick that's easy to reapply. So I guess I'm still looking for the perfect dupe of this lipstick. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to track them down and compare them. I hope you liked this video. It's a little bit different from the usual skincare content, but I hope it was still really interesting. Click the like, subscribe, check me out on Instagram, and check out my blog if you like nerding out about beauty. And I'll see you next time for more beauty science.